Hello, this is Geoffrey Frankel with Solutions in Chemistry. Today I'm going to talk about questions in the IB paper 1 of HL Chemistry on the topic of acids and bases. This is calculations 3 and you will be able to answer these questions fast and correctly. This is another one of those where you just have to remember how to create the equation, in this case for Kb. You start off with the weak base, NH3, you add water to it, get the reversible equations, you go to NH4 plus, so that requires an H plus on it and that loses an H plus. So you get that. And then you've got the Kb equals NH4 plus OH minus NH3. And immediately you go to this one, D. Just to confirm you understand that we're not putting the water in under here simply because the water is present in vast excess and its concentration doesn't change during these kind of reversible reactions for either a weak base or a weak acid. The second thing to notice is that the, in this case ammonia, is at the bottom of the equation. If you quickly look through this, you see there's that one and that one. You know that's not right because it's got water there and it shouldn't have water, but you know this must be right because it's the only other one with NH3 at the bottom, so that's it. So you can do that within 10 seconds, and you can confirm that those two are the correct ones on top, even without writing out that equation. But if you have to write out that equation, then it doesn't take long to do it. And that is the expression for K. Having done the ammonia one, this becomes easy. We're simply looking for the amine, ethylamine, on the bottom of the equation. And looking at this, we see it's there, and above it is the NH3 plus and OH minus. This must be it. Just to confirm that, it's CH3, CH2, NH2 plus H2O goes to CH3, CH2, NH3 plus, plus OH minus, and therefore the KB equals that one, CH3, CH2, NH3 plus OH minus over the amine, CH3, CH2, NH2 and therefore that is the answer B and this can be done in 10 seconds or less just look for the amine on the bottom and that eliminates in this case all three of the others you are expected to know that ammonia is a weak base and therefore the pH of a 0.01 mole per decimeter cubed solution would be more than 7 but less than 12. You must know that that is an acid, pH of 2, that is an acid, pH between 2 and 7, and that this would be the pH of a strong base at that concentration. Therefore the only one that's left is C. You can do this one in 10 seconds. If you're mixing 100 centimeters cubed of sodium hydroxide solution with 900 centimeters cubed of water, you are diluting it 10 times. And therefore, the pH would move by one unit. In this case, it's going to move down. It's going to be less alkaline and therefore it moved from pH 12 to pH 11. Again, another one that should take you no more than 10 seconds. A 
as soon as they tell you it's a weak base, no, it's not an acid. It's not an acid. And that can only be the pH of a strong base. Therefore, it must be B. Now, let me prove that by doing a calculation. Do not need to do the calculation. You simply need to know that that is the pH of a strong base, that is the pH of an acid, and that is the pH of a strong acid. But let me do the calculation. So you start with a base, and the normal equation is P plus H2O goes to BH plus, this could be ammonia, for example, or an amine, plus OH minus. The dissociation constant they give you, therefore, that's 1 times 10 to the minus 7. And that equals BH plus concentration times OH minus concentration over B. And as previously, we don't include the water, the H2O, simply because it's there in vast excess and does not change in concentration no matter what you do with this reaction. So what we do know is because of this, that's reversible, because of this, the concentration of that is equal to the concentration of that. Let me write that down. BH plus equals the concentration of OH minus. And therefore, since we're looking for the concentration of OH minus squared over B, Whenever they're talking about a weak base, it's usually easier to work out the concentration of OH minus. If they talk about a weak acid, then you work out the concentration of H plus. So we're working out the concentration of OH minus because it's a weak base. It's 1 times 10 to the minus 7. Oh, and they, they actually tell you the concentration of B, which is 0.1. Therefore, OH minus squared equals that times that, which is 1 times 10 to the minus 8. And therefore the concentration of H minus equals 1 times 10 to the minus 4. Therefore, POH equals minus the log of OH minus, which equals 4. And since we know that P, P H plus P O H equals 14, if that is 4, that must be 10. But as I said, it's not necessary to do the calculation. You can work it out from fundamental chemical principles. And it can be done in 10 seconds. They're yeah, telling you two pieces of information. One is the value of Kw. The second is the value of Ka. And they're asking for the value of Kb. Well, what you need to remember is Ka times Kb equals Kw. And therefore, Kb equals Kw over Ka. And that equals 1 times 10 to the minus 14 over... 6.8 times 10 to the minus 4. And that is therefore this one. In practice, as soon as you remember this equation, you need to simply look for Kw on the top line. It is only there. It's the only one that has Kw on the top line. Therefore, C must be right. So, this is a question that can be done in 10 seconds. You simply look for Kw on the top line. If there were two of them with Kw on the top line, you would then check that Ka is on the bottom line. Don't even have to understand quite what they mean by an aqueous fluoride ion has a Kb and HF has a Ka. You just have to believe that the two are related and that one is the conjugate base of the other. The two ways of looking at it are HF goes to 
h plus plus f minus and f minus plus h2o goes to hf plus o h minus this one would give you the ka this one would give you the kb and if you decided to check this equation out you could work out in your own time the value of ka from this equation the value of kb from this equation and lo and behold you would find that ka times kb equals kw and that is always true this is one that can be done in 10 seconds if you found this youtube video helpful please subscribe to my channel solutions in chemistry and look at my other videos thank you